Okay, so um, ready to dive into something that sounds like it could be, you know, ripped from the headlines of, uh, well, actually, an IS from the headlines, but it's got that like crime thriller vibe, but real life, you know, we're talking about Gennaro Garcia Luna. Yeah, no, you're right. It's uh, it's got all those elements, but the reality is way more uh, unsettling when you think about it. I mean, this is the former top cop in Mexico talking about the guy responsible for leading the fight against like the cartels. And he gets hit with a 38 year sentence. 38 years. That's wow. That's serious time. And to your point, it's not just any official, right? This was Mexico's top security guy. Yeah. Like, Imagine the head of the FBI, and then on top of that, he goes on to oversee the entire, I don't know, like the equivalent of the Department of Homeland Security or something. Exactly. This wasn't some uh, some minor bureaucrat. We're talking about immense power. Garcia Luna, he was calling the shots during a really critical time in Mexico's, you know, in the whole drug war. So when we say corruption, we're not talking about like... A few small time bribes here and there, yeah. right? This is another level. Oh, yeah. This was the big time. Prosecutors weren't fessing around. They presented evidence that Garcia Luna was taking millions, millions of dollars from the Sinaloa cartel. Well, wait, hold on. The Sinaloa cartel? That's like the real deal, right? I mean, we're talking about one of the most powerful, ruthless criminal organizations, like anywhere. Exactly. And the allegations go way beyond just, you know, looking the other way. We're talking about active participation. Like what? Give me an example. What kind of things are we talking about here? Okay, so imagine this. Suitcases, literal suitcases stuffed with cash being handed off, uh, you know, discreetly, of course. It's the kind of thing you see in movies, but this was real life. It's like finding out the warden of a prison is on the payroll of the, you know, the biggest crime boss inside. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what exactly was he accused of doing for the cartel in exchange for all that money? Well, think about it. The guy was like Mexico's top cop, right? He had access to everything, planned raids, names of informants, you name it. Prosecutors argued that he gave all that and more to the Sinaloa cartel. They basically had a mole at the highest level. Wow. So like they were always one step ahead. Pretty much. They yeah. could operate with like total impunity because they knew what the authorities were going to do, sometimes even before the authorities knew. It's crazy to think this could go on right under everyone's noses for so long. How is that even possible? That's the million dollar question, isn't it? How could someone at that level operate that way without being caught sooner? And that's what investigators are trying to figure out, right? Like, was he a lone wolf or were there other people involved? Was it just him? Or was there something bigger, more systemic that allowed this to happen? And that's what's so scary about it because it makes you question everything, right? It makes you wonder if it could happen there, could it happen anywhere? Exactly. And that's what we're gonna try to unpack today. Yeah, it really makes you wonder like, how deep does this go, you know? Yeah. And speaking of going deep, we have to talk about the other people who might be involved in all this. Like, the sources you shared mentioned this guy, Mario Velarde Martinez. So who was this guy and what was his role? Right. So Velarde Martinez, he was like Garcia Luna's right-hand man, or at least that's what it seems like. He's accused of being the main link between, you know, the cartel and the government. Okay. So like the go-between. Exactly. Like, picture this, right? Clandestine meetings burner phones, exchanging information, cash, the whole shebang. That's the kind of stuff Velarde Martinez was allegedly up to. So not just one bad apple then, huh? Sounds like a whole network of people working to, like, sabotage the system from within. Which, I mean, talk about betrayals, right? But what about the guy who gave Garcia Luna all this power in the first place? Calderon, the former president? I mean, there's got to be some questions there, right? Oh, absolutely. I mean, the whole thing casts a huge shadow over Calderon's presidency. He's the one who put Garcia Luna in that position. And, you know, their terms, they lined up with some really, really bad years in the drug war. So people are wondering if he knew, right? Of course. I mean, wouldn't you? It's like if you find out your star player was throwing games, you start to wonder about the coach, right? Totally. And it's like this whole house of cards thing, right? If someone that high up was allegedly compromised, it makes you question everything. Yeah. And you start to think like, who else knew? Or even if they didn't know, should they have? Was there a blind eye being turned somewhere? It's just, yeah. it's a lot to process. Yeah. You know, and it's easy to get caught up in the, like, the political intrigue of it all. But we can't forget about the real people caught in the middle of this. Exactly. And that's something that often gets lost in these big, sprawling cases. You know, it's easy to get caught up in the drama of it all. But at the end of the day, this was about people's lives. Yeah, you hit the nail on the head there. I mean, we're talking about a system that allegedly allowed this level of corruption to just like 
thrive. Garcia Luna is going to be behind bars for a long time, but this whole thing brought up a lot of other questions, especially about the U.S., actually. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, the fact that the trial was in a U.S. court, that definitely raised some eyebrows. It's not like it was just some random case either. This was about Mexico's drug war and the U.S., well, let's just say they're not exactly uninvolved in that whole situation. Right, exactly. It's like, where do you even draw the line? I mean, some people are saying the U.S. has to take some responsibility that their whole war on drugs and their close ties with Mexican law enforcement, basically, yeah. it created the environment where this kind of thing could happen in the first place. Yeah, and then you've got people on the other side saying, look, it doesn't matter where the trial was, at least the guy's being held accountable. It's a mess, really. Total mess. And I can only imagine what this has done in Mexico. I mean, for the government. Yeah. For everyday people, yeah. you know? Oh, it's huge. Think about it, right? You're living in Mexico. You've seen firsthand the cartel violence, the corruption, and then you find out the guy who was supposed to be keeping you safe, he was in bed with the enemy the whole time. It's like a punch in the gut, you know? No. It makes you question everything. Totally. And I think for a lot of people, it goes beyond Garcia Luna himself, you know? It's bigger than that. It's about this deep desire for a system that actually works, a system that protects people, that they can trust. Right, a system that's not, you know, totally riddled with corruption. Exactly. And as tough as this whole thing is to stomach, you know, the trial, the verdict, all of it, maybe, just maybe, it'll be the thing that forces some real change. Let's hope so. Yeah. So... As we kind of wrap things up here, I mean, what are your thoughts? What can we, I don't know, what can anyone do to make sure something like this doesn't happen again? I mean, not just in Mexico, but anywhere. Right. That's the million dollar question, isn't it? And it's not an easy answer. It's going to take a whole lot of effort on a lot of different fronts. Like we need stronger institutions, more transparency. People need to be able to hold their leaders accountable. Yeah. It's like got to attack it from all angles, right? Exactly. And I'm not going to pretend it's easy because it's not. But it's got to start somewhere, right. right? I think that's right. And maybe, just maybe, this whole Garcia Luna case, as messed up and crazy as it is, maybe it'll be the wake-up call that's needed. Mm. You know, a reminder that we can't just sit back and wait for things to change. We have to demand it. Couldn't agree more. Well, that about wraps it up for this deep dive. We covered a lot of ground today, but one thing's for sure. This story, it's not over yet. The trial might be done, but the conversations that started, those are just getting going. And, you know, sometimes the stories that really get under your skin, the ones that stick with you, they're not the ones you read in books or watch on screen. They're the ones that are happening right here in the real world with real consequences. And they serve as a stark reminder that truth, well, sometimes it's stranger than fiction. Thanks for joining us for this deep dive.